Hey guys, Jared back with here. In today's video, I wanted to go over the story of how I got my do-it-yourself EEG full brain recording machine to finally work. So we've gone through a lot of issues. If you're not familiar with the last video I made where I did the first test recording, the issues we were having were we got it to start streaming data, but it was essentially just a lot of noise. But after a little bit more testing, we had the hypothesis that the electrodes weren't properly connected to the reference and that's why we were just getting a bunch of noise. So just testing one or two electrodes, we tested uh, one on the forehead, I think FP1 to test eye blinks and also one in the back to test the posterior dominant rhythm, the brain waves in the back of the head, essentially the background rhythm of the brain. Now, after hooking up both of those electrodes properly to the reference, we, we were able to get some real brain signals for O1 and for FP1 on the forehead, we were able to record eye blinks successfully. So that's great news, but stuff was still looking a little off. It was looking hmm, too low amplitude, especially for a brain like mine. I know I got a nice healthy brain. So we had to do some more testing to now hook up every single electrode up properly to the reference. In order to do that, my dad tied some wires around the circuit board pins to connect every single electrode to the reference. And now in today's video, we're gonna hook it up again and see what we can find. The first step to preparing for this EEG is to plug each and every wire into the circuit board so we can get a recording of the brain. Now I have a little color code system which makes it a little easier to keep track of. So I have about 30 wires here and I untangle them one by one. I start out with the midline, FZ, CZ, and PZ. Also the reference and ground are right next to it. So I start with those, untangling them one by one and start to plug them into the circuit board. Now it's pretty difficult to keep the wires from getting tangled up. It takes a lot of experience, but I found if you keep some tension in the bundle of wires and only try to pull out maybe one wire or two wires at a time, it's a lot easier to prevent them from getting tangled up. Because I remember as a student, oh boy, I have some crazy, crazy events where I got essentially every single wire tangled up. The, the supervisors were looking at me like, oh my God, Jared, what did we do here? And I just had to take about 20 minutes trying to get them untangled. So back to plugging them all in one by one on the circuit boards where I have them for sale. Each one has a label on it for each electrode. So you'll know which electrode goes where, but on this one, it's just blank since it's the, I guess, first prototype version. Now I plug in every single wire it takes a while, but you know, we're doing a whole brain recording here. We're not just doing a little two or three electrode baby recording. We're doing the whole brain. Now here it is when I had them all plugged in, ready to roll. So I take my wires, there's my cat, Casper, take them into the bathroom and I'm ready to get started. So getting started, I scoop some conductive paste out with a little popsicle stick and smear it on my hand. Usually it would be on my glove, but since I'm doing a recording of myself. Uh, I just, I already washed my hands, guys. Staying hygienic. I just smear it on the glove and I take the midline wires here that go down the center of the head. That's where I like to start with. I get all the wires. I kind of just keep them on my hand, get them a little kind of like plugged into the paste so they're easy access. And then I take my prep with the Q-tips and I start scrubbing my scalp to prepare to put the wires on. So I scrub the scalp in all the areas. Probably should have recorded a little higher, but it's too late. I already hooked up all the wires. Now I'm getting the last few. I got an eye lead and also the EKG. The machine ended up falling actually, so I had to pick it up, try to be careful not to get paste all over the machine. Now here I am putting on the left eye lead right there kind of below the left eye trying to keep it on but it kind of falls down so that's one reason why with the the eye the left eye lead 
in particular, I like to take a little bit of tape. So here I go, undo the little tape, stick it on so it doesn't fall off. Boom, looking good. So now I just have one last electrode. We're gonna go with the a EKG, the heartbeat recorder. Now you could put it on the left part of your chest, but I'm just gonna put it on my shoulder here. That also works as well. Trying to get it all out, scoop it in the last bit of paste, stick it on the shoulder, left shoulder, kind of smear it on so it sticks. But with the EKG also, I like to take a little tape since it's more prone to falling off than the others on top of the head, stick it down, boom. Pull the sleeve back over and we are ready to record my brain. When I turned it on, I saw a couple good things, a couple bad things. Number one, good. We can actually see some brain activity. It's not all just noise. So it seems like my dad connecting all the wires to the reference actually worked. We can see eight to 12 waves in the back of my head, 01 to 02. But some bad things are is that there's a little bit of electro drift. As it's plotting, it takes a little bit for it to settle down. So we can easily fix that with some filtering, which my dad ended up doing in the next version. And also one big problem, if you look in the top left at the sensitivity, it's at two microvolts per millimeter. If you're not familiar, that's what we use on dead people, people who have pretty much flatline brains. And I know I'm not almost dead, so there's gotta be something wrong with the height that I'm amplifying the signal. So we ended up talking it over and guys, we figured out where we were going wrong. Here's a screenshot after we fixed it. If you guys wanna know what happened, well, we were racking our brains. I didn't want to take off the EEG before we figured it out. It took us maybe 30 minutes of thinking. We were thinking, what could be wrong? So it's got to be something with the amplification of the signal. Is it a hardware thing? Is it a software thing? We looked through the code, and we found in our conversion from volts to microvolts, because EEGs displayed in microvolts, we made an error. Instead of dividing by 1 million like we were supposed to, we actually divided by 10 million so that explained why the signal was initially so flat. So by removing that zero, getting the correct conversion from volts to microvolts, it fixed our signal and now it looks much better. I'm, I'm glad I don't have a brain death brain, guys. I actually got a nice, strong alpha beta background. The only thing that looks a little off is some of the placements of the electrodes, probably off a few centimeters each. That's just because I hooked it up blind, but this was really just a first test, and it's a proof of concept. It, we have a working full brain recording machine, guys. Looks like the first recording that worked was on July 28th, 2024 at 4.55 p.m. That's going to be a monumental day in my life. Glad I was able to document it. Thank you guys for coming along. If you want your own EEG machine, I can teach you how to hook it up. Go on my website, ioneeg.com. The first one ships in September. Thank you all for watching. Make sure you hit the like button. Love you all. And I'll see you guys on the next video. If you need any help hooking up your EEG, let me know. Email, comments. I got you guys. See ya.